हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम डॉक्टर सौरभ पटवर्धन फ्रॉम नंदादीप आई हॉस्पिटल पीजी जी टीचिंग इंस्टीट्यूट एंड फेको एस आई सी एस ट्रेनिंग सेंटर सांगली महाराष्ट्र इंडिया इन अवर सेंटर वी हैव लॉट ऑफ टीचिंग एक्टिविटीज विच इंक्लूड्स हैंड्स ऑन ट्रेनिंग एज वेल इन दिस वीडियो आई एम गोइंग टू स्पीक अबाउट almost perfect case the case of a intumescent looking cat rack but hard nucleus so generally for these cases i prefer to use a heavier viscoelastic agent dispersive agent hydrocode we need to stain this capsule because it's a white cat rack we need good contrast when we start doing capsule rexis so first thing i injected is I put blue dye under the air, and then I am injecting hyaluronic, which has similar composition to viscoat, but it's more viscous than viscoat, so it will stay in the anterior chamber easily. And you can see that the anterior capsule has already become quite flat after I injected the viscoelastic, and uh, the visco press test, which I have described. indicates that flatter the anterior capsule is after ovd injection that means the intumescence is not much so i can go ahead with regular capsule rexis so here i am using micro capsule rexis forceps i held the flap uh, slightly away from the tear and uh, you can see the flap tear going little outward so i have to pull it back in using the quick pull and i could get the capsule rexis but i would like to show you the moment where probably i made the mistake so i should have held this flap right here very close to the tear so i could have used the tearing forces but i held it away so the ripping action caused the tear to go outward so you can just watch it again that once it starts going outward i have to use the quick pull maneuver where i will hold the flap and uh, with a slightly quicker action i'll be trying to pull this flap centrally so it comes in even if it goes to the zonules we can pull back using this quick pull technique in most of the cases so what you see here is a minor mistake which was corrected so for more information you can watch my video on this technique using the forceps where we have to always look into whether i'm using the tearing force or the ripping force because we have to use more tearing force so that we get the capsule rexis right and also the quick pull technique of retrieving the capsule rexis which is going outside now once the capsule rexis is done i have started fake i'm using centurion fake machine with 36 mm of mercury pressure here and uh, the technique that i am going to use is the pre terminal chop technique uh, which i really prefer for this hard grade of cat tracks and it's very useful because it requires the least levels of skill more control is there and you get very very minimal complications and that's what i like to teach my fellows and trainees as well because if you use any other technique you need higher level of skill levels but here the trick is to have first a very good deep trench you can see that you should be able to see that bright yellow glow in these cases you must have seen my pattern recognition video where you know that the depth is achieved when you start seeing the change in the you know color of the trench and once i achieve that what i'm going to do is bury this tip superficially so i don't need a deep bury so this can be done easily by any beginner as well a superficial bury and then i am going to do the vertical chop here which is a pre terminal chop so i don't have to go around the equator but that also you can do like it is used in the terminal chop technique but this works quite well so the idea is to do pre terminal vertical chop and as you go in you can see that the the chopper goes deeper and deeper into the uh, the groove that we have already made so that you get nice separation of uh, nucleus into two parts once the two halves are done 
we have to go ahead with the standard chopping technique where most important thing is the fold over the nucleus you have to keep watching whether the nucleus is rotating when you have the hold if it is rotating you bury in again i am using here around uh, 50 to 60 percent longitudinal power with 40 percent on time keeping the on time less than 50 percent avoids any wound burns when we are using longitudinal FACO longitudinal FACO is always better for chopping I have shown it in previous video that whenever you use the longitudinal FACO the area which is emulsified is similar to the tip size while in torsional FACO it is much wider so you don't get the good grip so always for chopping use the longitudinal hyperpulse mode where you use at least or I would say less than 40% on time. And once the chops are made, uh, I am going to move forward. I am going to pull out first piece and then further go to the FACO emulsification quadrant removal where I am going to change my FACO energy to torsional FACO energy and with the balance tip I am using 70% on time I am sorry 70% of uh, the energy and 80% on time so uh, still I am going to use the pulse mode but I am going to use a higher power of 70% generally with balance tip even for the hardest cataract you rarely need more than 70% of the FACO power occasionally I have to go 75 or 80% but generally it's not needed now this is the most important i do it in all hard cataract cases though some surgeons may find it unnecessary to replenish the dispersive ovd but i always do it in these cases where i want very you know clear crystal clear cornea immediately post-operative so that uh, patient gets vision back quickly patients are less anxious about the visual recovery and also this uh, replenishing viscoelastic i feel also reduces the inflammation which might be caused by excessive dispersion of this ovd in the antechamber so uh, after replenishing the ovd i'm going to again do quadrant removal remaining quadrants are removed i try to stabilize the eye right in the primary position all the time i'm trying to keep my FACO tip in the safe zone always you can see the bevel is sideways so that uh, the occlusion is quicker and I can remove the pieces or emulsify the pieces quite easily you can see those bubbles are steady that means the OVD is protecting the endothelium there and for this epinucleus I use the swirl so I'm I'm not going down posteriorly I'm just moving my probe so that the irrigation is you know directed towards the equator of the lens and then this epinucleus just comes out in a ziffy so you don't have to approach the epinucleus to remove it just swirl the FACO probe around so the irrigation will kind of push this uh, epinucleus uh, anteriorly so that uh, it can be aspirated by FACO probe safely and easily so so many principles I have used during the surgery to have a safe and uh, excellent outcome for the patient so do watch my other videos also in the playlist and I'm sure it's going to help you when you approach a similar case. Do share your views on the techniques which I use. You can comment so that those who are learning FACO will also benefit from your experiences. Thank you so much. Keep watching.